Now we'll hear from candidates from House District 16 in East Anchorage, Democratic incumbent Max Grunberg Jr. and Republican Don Hadley. Thank you both for being here. We'll start with 30 second introductions from each candidate. And we'll start with you, Mr. Grunberg. Thank you very much, Anne. Uh, good evening, folks. Thank you for inviting me into your, into your living room this evening. It's really a pleasure to be on TV and running again. It's a pleasure serving you. I'm uh, just completing my, my 10th term, my 20th year. I'm the most senior member of the House. I've just been elected the House Minority Whip. And I'm in a position to really to help the district. We have a number of very important issues that are going to be facing us this year. And I'm going to need your help, your advice. I look forward to meeting you at the door if I haven't. And thank you again for watching. And now, Mr. Hadley. Good evening. I'm Don Hadley, running for the last State House District 16. I came up here in the Air Force in 1967. Uh, following my active duty tour, I taught school for 27 years. During that 27 years, I also served in Alaska Air National Guard. I've lived in College Gate in the same house for 35 years. Uh, I have not moved into the district in order to uh, in order to run for office. And I have enjoyed going door to door. Pleasure meeting all of you. Thank you. For the first segment of the show, we'll be asking questions. So each candidate will have 45 seconds to answer every question. And I will start with you, Mr. Gernberg. The Anchorage School District is anticipating a $22 million shortfall for this next year, and then an even larger one in the upcoming years. What, as a legislator, will you do to help the district for the long term, if anything? This is a tough question, and it's part of the overall budget question. What we have to do is prioritize and plan not only how we're going to spend our money, but how we're going to raise money. It was made particularly difficult because we just gave the oil companies enough money to balance the budget. I hope that works out. It remains to be seen. What we need to do is to make certain that we prioritize and put education at the top of the list. Education, transportation, public safety. But we need, if we're going to survive as a society, we need to do the very best job we can with our children, provide them with a quality education, include pre-kindergarten, include additional funding for the college. And this is part of the overall question, and we need to address it as such. All right. Mr. Hadley. Spending, school spending is a big problem. We probably will uh, never have enough money. Uh, however, uh, Mr. Grunberg talks about uh, financing education, but at the same time, uh, he voted against increasing the uh, base, uh, base student allocation this year, and that doesn't help the, st uh, the school budget at all. Um, we, need, we do need to prioritize. Uh, the school district was responsible for, for prioritizing, and, and we need to do everything that we can as legislators to encourage uh, the school district to spend their money wisely, but it is their responsibility as well. Thank you, Mr. Hadley, and we'll start with you for the second question. Sticking to the topic of education, what do you think about proposals to use public money for funding private schools? Constitutionally, at this present time, uh, the Constitution of, of the state of Alaska prohibits giving um, public money to support private uh, schools. And until the Constitution is changed by popular vote, uh, I would support the Alaska Constitution. And you, Mr. Gernberg? Thank you. My answer is basically the same. But it's not just the same because of constitutional principles. I fundamentally believe that we need to have a good, strong public school system. So it's one, not just one system of schools that's inferior to the other, and so that the people who can afford private schools get a a, a premier education. We need to help all kids get education. And on the base student allocation, there was more to that bill, uh, and Mr. Hadley knows that. It wasn't just a simple little question, because I do support raising 
the base student allocation. But you've got to have a clean bill. All right. Mr. Grunberg, you've already touched on the state budget and how complicated that is. Once again, the state is anticipating a shortfall. What infrastructure projects do you think deserve funding? Well, I can tell you some that don't. I think we're spending too much on the Knick Crossing. I think it's premature. I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area, and building the Bay Bridge at the right time was the right thing to do. This is not yet ripe to do that. I think there are a number of other projects that uh, we spend money on. Um, uh, the road out of Juneau, that's premature as well. I think we need to increase the ferry system, transportation from all, for all over the state. I think we need to maintain our infrastructure, not just build new buildings, but put money into maintaining the buildings we have, like repairing your home. We should do that. And Mr. Hadley, what are your thoughts on infrastructure projects? Well, transportation is a big uh, issue in, in the state. I agree with Mr. Grunberg on the bridge. Uh, it seems that the bridge, as is now planned, uh, uh, will, would be inadequate if the building uh, and development on the uh, Matsu end of the bridge uh, actually takes place. Um, if, the, if, if the Matsu develops, the bridge in, that we're talking about it would be inadequate uh, to make that service. Uh, we do have a problem with infrastructure. We need to do what we can to improve and build on uh, what we have. Thank you. While we're on the topic of money, let's move into health care and money. By most measures, Alaska has the highest health care costs in the world, and more than 20% of spending in the state's economy goes towards health care. What would you do as a legislator to address this problem, Mr. Hudley? Health care is a big problem. Being uh, on uh, uh, Medicare myself, it has been a great uh, uh, experience to see what happens to seniors when uh, suddenly the health care plan that you did have uh, no longer exists and you're forced into a government health care program. Government health care, I don't think, uh, really meets the needs. And we've seen by uh, the uh, Affordable Care Act that it has not decreased. It has only increased the cost of health care. We're fortunate here in Alaska, I think, that we have an excellent health care program uh, and doctors and hospitals, uh, but not everybody is able to have access to that. Thank you. Mr. Gerenberg. Thank you, Ms. Holman. Several things. First of all, I think the governor was wrong not to apply for Medicaid. That was a big mistake, and I would like to see the legislature take some steps to ensure that that's done. Number two, we need to do more prevention. Many health insurance plans don't provide enough for prevention. A bill that I introduced that passed last year, uh, the Senate version passed, uh, requires that all new babies 24 hours old be tested for heart defects. It was from New Jersey. And the day after Governor Christie signed it, it saved a baby's life. I was instrumental in getting that put in a book of suggested state legislation so it can go out all over the country. All right, thank you. For this segment of the program, you two now have the chance to ask each other questions. How it will go is you'll ask a question. We'll start with Mr. Grunberg. You'll have a chance to respond, and then you can respond to his answer as well. So we'll start with you, and you each have two questions. Mr. Grunberg, a question for Mr. Hadley, please. Thank you. Mr. Hadley, what is your feeling about the Judicial Council? Do you support retaining it, or do you think it's not a good idea? Well, for the Judicial Council, I think it needs more uh, civilian, non-lawyer non, uh, types uh, appointed to the Judicial Council so that uh, uh, it is just not an organization that represents uh, attorneys. And you may respond to his answer? Yes. A constitutional amendment was introduced this year that would pack the Judicial Council. And it would provide that the, there would be three additional non-lawyers appointed by the governor and confirmed by the legislature. It would politicize the Judicial Council, and it would upset the balance of power of a very independent, non 
traditional, uh, a, a very um, uh, uh, independent judiciary. And I strongly yeah. oppose that. And uh, I think we need to keep the Judicial Council. All right, Mr. Hadley, this is your opportunity to ask your opponent. Well, oh, okay. <laughs> um, I have an issue to, uh, about big government. Uh, you seem to, by some of your votes, have been uh, in favor of, of more government control. I would mention specifically uh, House Bill 69, which exempted uh, the title of which was to exempt firearms from federal regulation. And uh, you voted uh, no on that, which means more federal regulation. The second one was House Bill 1, which authorized individuals to decline health care coverage, um, taking away an individual's right to, uh, to uh, have the health care that they chose in favor of having um, mm. uh, government health care. Could you please jump to the question? And the question is, uh, how do you stand on g big government? Well, that's a very broad question, yes, um, and uh, I think government exists to help people help themselves. It's not there to provide a handout. It's there to encourage people to be able to be the best that they can. And unfortunately, we had hundreds of votes. I don't recall those exact bills. I can't, I'd have to look at the bills themselves. Often titles are misleading or incomplete, um, and I'm happy to do that if anybody's interested. But I think that people have to be encouraged to make their own way in this life. It's like um, just uh, not giving handouts to people on the street. We would like to see people put to work. We would like to see people productive. That's my view. Do you have a response? Well, that sounds good, but um, really the end result of, of your vote was to uh, give more power to the federal government and take power away from the people, take choice away from the people. Uh, House Bill 69 uh, ended up in a, a result of, uh, of uh, probably your downgrading of, of, uh, by the NRA, which uh, gave you a, a, a grade of 33 percent, and so Thank you. It's now time to, well, it's your chance to ask another question. I'd, I'd like to say something about it, if I could. Um, no, no I if, if you would like to incorporate that into your question. Uh, okay. Sure, yeah. Um, uh, Mr. Hadley, um, what do you believe the role of the state legislature should be? Um, should we be out there actively uh, making laws or allowing uh, the, the executive branch to do it? I'm referring specifically to the National Guard scandal. What should the legislature be doing? You asked to me a minute ago, how active should government be? Well, I'm asking you how active the, should the legislature be with respect to things like the Guard scandal? Well, I'm not sure that the, legislators, the legislature's job is to oversee the uh, Alaska National Guard. Having served in the Air Guard for 22 years myself and having been an EOT officer, as well as a human relations trainer, uh, I had some firsthand uh, uh, sight or oversight of those kinds of issues uh, if they had been uh, during uh, my tenure as an as a EOT officer in the Air Guard. Um, it is a branch of um, office underneath the, gover uh, underneath the governor. I'm not sure that the legislature um, needs to be taking control of the, of the National Guard in Alaska. Thank you, Mr. Hadley. You may respond. Thank you. The National Guard is largely funded by the federal government, but it is under the Department of Military and Veterans Affairs, and it is commanded ultimately by the governor, but the adjutant general, a two-star general, in this case Tom Katkus, uh, commands the Guard. I happen to sit on the House Military and Veterans Affairs Committee and on that budget subcommittee. I was a gunnery officer in the Navy. I'm a veteran. I'm the only Navy veteran in the legislature. I care about the Guards. 
that we need to be sure that that guard is under control, that we're not having sexual assaults there. We need to look at some of the statutes that have never been looked at, that are very weak controlling the guard. Thank you. And one final question, Mr. Hadley, please. Well, my final question, I suppose, would be about parental rights. And uh, that issue came uh, about, uh, in, in my mind, with House Bill 35 and House Bill 364 uh, in 2009 and 2008 uh, with regard to parental consent for underage abortions. And you voted no on that. And I think it is an issue, as a parent myself, I feel that uh, I have a child I, that is... You will have a chance to respond yeah. once. Um, as I said, the, the question is parental rights. And it seems to be that your vote uh, um, is... We, oh, would you like to respond to May this? May I yield a couple of uh, seconds so he can finish his question? I don't care. Well, the, the question is, uh, who, who do you think should be in control of the family? The government or the parents? Okay, let me answer it in the broad, a broader sense. A bill was in several years ago that I worked long and hard on. The question was whether parents would have the right to listen in on a child's telephone conversations. There was concern that there would be underage kids who'd be lured online by adults. And this was designed not only to do that, but to protect parental rights. Peacock the speaker at the time, was the main sponsor on the bill. And I worked with his staff long and hard to come up with something that protected parental rights. With respect to abortion, and that's what you're really asking here, it's not just about parental rights, it's about constitutional rights. I don't make the federal constitution and neither do you or you, Ms. Hillman. The federal constitution stands and we need to follow it. That bill was unconstitutional, I'm sorry to say. And your response? I feel as a parent that it is my right to know whether uh, my child is going to have an abortion or not, period. Uh, I don't think the government has any right to interfere in my knowing what's going on with my child. I'm supporting that child. I love that child. I need to have that knowledge. It shouldn't be kept from parents. And we have now ended the portion of the debate wherein you guys ask each other questions. So I have a few more before we close. Um, on the matter of government involvement with private lives, recently a federal judge overturned the same-sex marriage ban in Alaska. The governor is appealing that decision. Do you support the governor in his decision to continue appealing? Mr. Grunberg. No. I don't, for a variety of reasons. Number one, it is a political ploy, a grandstand, has no chance of success, a waste of taxpayers' money. No courts that I know of, at least at the appellate level, have upheld the, um, the ban in, certain cir in other circumstances. It's part of a very wasteful practice in the current administration to take and go off quixotically on a number of anti-federal government things that are costing the state a lot of money. And I'm about to write the Department of Law a letter asking for an itemization of how much they've spent on these feudal lawsuits. That's the way we're going to save money. Mr. Hadley. Well, I agree that it probably in the end is going to be a waste of money. But the people of Alaska voted uh, for uh, against same-sex marriages and uh, by a wide majority, and I think the governor is correct in, in filing, a, uh, uh, asking for a, 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 to have that law, present law, uh, new decision looked at. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that there's nobody here sitting in this room that uh, would uh, believe that, that uh, same-sex marriage is not going to become a fact. Thank you, Mr. Hadley. Before we close out the program, you each have a moment to give a 30-second closing statement. Again, we'll start alphabetically with Mr. Grunberg. Thank you, Ms. Hillman. 
What I wanted to say, and I feel very strongly about this, that in certain states 30, 40, 50, 100 years ago, there were laws that said interracial marriages were prohibited, and the voters in those states voted for them too. That did not make that right. I have stood up on the House floor in support of the right of people to love whom they choose. And I feel very strongly that this is a basic civil right. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, once again, thanks for letting us be here tonight. Thank you. And Mr. Hadley. I would like to thank all of you out there listening and watching. watching. Uh, I have enjoyed this campaign. I love going door to door and meeting all of you. And uh, especially when I come to doors where people, uh, I introduce myself and people say, oh yes, Mr. Adley, we've already voted and we voted for you. I give you my heartfelt thanks. Thank you. And thanks to both of you for joining us here in the studio today. That was Max Gruenberg, Jr. and Don Handley, who are running for House District 16 in East Anchorage.